Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name's Joe. Um, so the plan for today is to have a little bit of, of a discussion about uh, Google Summer of Code and in particular FreeBSD's involvement in Google Summer of Code. Uh, the plan is just to start with some basic information for anybody that might not be familiar with the program. Uh, and then we'll give a bit of guidance about uh, how to apply through FreeBSD for, for the upcoming year. Okay, so what is Google Summer of Code? Um, in short, it's a program that Google started in 2005 where uh, contributors, contributors who are interested in working on uh, open source get paired up with a mentoring organization, uh, an organization like FreeBSD, and you get paid a stipend to work on open source code for the summer. Um, according to Google, they've connected more than 19,000 contributors from 112 different countries with 18,000 different mentors from uh, 118 different countries. Um, and over the years, with all the different projects, there's been 43 million lines of code, over 43 million lines of code produced for uh, 800 different open source organizations. So it's a really great opportunity if you're, if you're new to open source and, and looking to get involved. Um, so how do you get involved? Uh, there's a couple main steps. Um, I could probably add a step zero before step one there, and that's uh, registering with uh, Google for the program. Um, in a few minutes, I'll, I'll go to the, the website and step through uh, some of these, these steps that you need to do. Uh, the next, next step is choosing a mentoring organization that you'd like to work with, uh, FreeBSD being one of them uh, again this year. Um, and then the next step is to uh, choose a project that you want to work on and choose a, a, a mentor. Um, and once you get that settled and you have a project and a mentor, you write a proposal and you submit it to Google. And if you're accepted, you write code for the summer and you get paid that stipend. Okay, so what's new in Google Summer of Code? Uh, starting last year, essentially, um, some flexibility was added to the program. So in the past, you had to be a student to be eligible to participate. But starting last year, uh, anyone who was, so yeah, there was some clarification on this. It's a little bit confusing. Uh, we just got some clarification a couple of weeks ago on uh, one of the mentoring mailing lists. So there's two categories of people. So there's students, and if you're a student, um, you qualify. If you're not a student, you can still qualify now as long as you're new to open source. Um, and some other changes to add more flexibility was with the size of the projects. So now you can work on either a medium-sized project or a large project. And there's also some flexibility with the duration. You can uh, uh, finish your project within 12 weeks or you can spread things out uh, to last 22 weeks. And so uh, FreeBSD has been participating in Google Summer of Code right from the beginning every year since 2005. And we've had 256 different uh, GSOC projects accepted over those years. Okay, so maybe we could go through uh, a little bit uh, the process of, of uh, kind of bootstrapping or getting started for somebody that wants to apply to Google Summer of Code. So there's two sites here. Um, really, you can get to everything. So, so this is the main Google Summer of Code site hosted on Google. And this is a, a Google Summer of Code uh, page that's hosted on the FreeBSD site. Really, you can get everywhere, including this site through the, the main Google Summer of Code page. So maybe I will uh, show that. So uh, the first thing you wanna do on the main page is go down and you have to go through this registration process. And then once you've done that, up on the menu on the left here, there's a, a getting started link. So we'll go there. And then there's another link for all the different organizations. So uh, these are all the app, uh, organizations that applied to participate as a mentoring organization in 2023. Um, today, we care uh, about one particular organization, FreeBSD. So I'll search there and click on our link. Um, and you'll see there's some links on the side here if you want to get in touch with us. And then there's a little blurb here that um, 
basically it's a, it's a little bit of a sales pitch for anybody interested in uh, operating system development. So we talk a bit about some of the compelling features uh, of FreeBSD. So it's advanced networking, security features, performance, and uh, uh, we kind of back that up with uh, some examples of uh, commercial uh, products that use FreeBSD. So um, PlayStation 5, Junos, uh, the operating system that's based on FreeBSD and Juniper routers. Uh, we talk about how Apple's OS X uh, used FreeBSD in part as the foundation uh, way back when OS X was started. Um, and we also say how Netflix uses FreeBSD to uh, take advantage of that uh, great networking to stream terabits of uh, video data. Uh, we talk a little bit about the history and we talk about the, the strong culture of mentoring in FreeBSD, which is uh, important for anyone uh, who wants to get started and, and, and take advantage of, of a mentor to help them uh, in that process. And so that second uh, site that I listed on the slide was uh, the Google Summer of Code page uh, hosted on, on the FreeBSD site. So we'll go there. Um, and so if you want to apply to Google Summer of Code through FreeBSD, pretty much everything uh, you need is on this page. So we have a little bit of that sales pitch again. And then we talk about some of those important steps like determining if you qualify to participate. Uh, this is a very important uh, link. It's the uh, timeline. So uh, it lists all the deadlines. So you want to stay on top of that and make sure you start things early. So right now we're in the uh, contributor application period that started on uh, March 20th. Um, and your deadline to submit an application is on April 4th at 1800 UTC. So make sure you stay on top of all that. Um, and then we provide some guidance on finding a project and a mentor. So uh, an important link here is this list of project ideas. So we maintain uh, a list of potential projects that you could work on uh, through FreeBSD. Uh, and if we go through, I think there's 17 projects listed here now. Um, and some of the information that we include is a technical context. So this is the person that uh, would likely make a good mentor for the project. We talk a bit about the type of skills you would need to be successful with this project. So in this particular uh, project, uh, you would need advanced C skills and some uh, experience working on the kernel. Uh, we talk a little bit about what would be expected halfway through the project, the duration, the difficulty, and then the final outcome. And then we talk a bit a bit more about uh, uh, what's involved in the project. So this particular project, you would only want to apply if you uh, had lots of experience with C and some experience with the kernel, but they're not all like that. So there's some here that have C intermediate, and I know there's a few new ones down here. Uh, here's some interesting ones. Uh, Alexander Chernikov added uh, a couple projects for people that are interested in networking. Um, and I just wanted to go, I think there's a couple at the bottom here that Warner put in. Uh, yeah, right here, uh, Warner added a couple projects. So if you're not a C developer, there's still an opportunity to participate. Uh, if you have some shell scripting or Python experience, there's a project here. And so these are just uh, suggested projects. They're not, don't limit yourself to just, just these uh, examples. Um, we also maintain a generic ideas page for projects. So some of those projects um, might not be scoped out for uh, Google Summer of Code, but what you could do is take a look at them for inspiration and you could send uh, uh, a post to the hackers at freebsd.org mailing list and maybe uh, just let people know that you're interested in doing something in that area and maybe somebody could assist you in um, uh, kind of hammering down a project that would be suitable for Google Summer of Code. Another place that you could look is in the FreeBSD status reports. So the status reports are essentially a summary of the work that's been going on in FreeBSD over the different quarters. So you could take a look through those and see what sort of development work has been going on and uh, and then do the same thing. If something piques your interest, post to the hackers at freebsd.org mailing list and tell people that you're interested in this and ask if anybody's uh, 
uh, willing to mentor you. Um, and finally, another place you can get inspiration is from uh, the old uh, Google Summer of Code uh, projects. So at all the projects that were accepted and completed through FreeBSD um, are listed here going back uh, 18 years. So you should hopefully find something uh, useful in there. And then next we talk about what you need to submit a good uh, proposal. So uh, essentially you have to include certain important information um, and we wanna make sure that people just don't copy some of those ideas from the uh, ideas list. Uh, you have to make it your own and you should, you should really talk to somebody once you got started on your proposal or once you have an idea, talk to somebody that's either listed in one of those, uh, listed as the technical contact on one of those uh, proposed projects or email hackers at freebsd.org again to, to get some guidance. Um, and then if you are accepted, uh, we talk a little bit about what's expected. Like we require that you um, do your development work in public so that uh, like you push to a public repository to um, facilitate collaboration. And, and, and also we wanna make sure that we can archive your project for future years um, uh, to help people out in the, in the future. And then finally, uh, uh, we include some kind of fact-like information. So uh, the GSOC fact and, and a guide for contributors and mentors and Google publishes some videos, so stuff like that. So maybe I'll go back up to these um, list of past projects and look at last year. Last year, we had quite a, a good year. We had seven projects and I think at four or five of the people um, that worked on uh, projects last year are in, to some degree still active with FreeBSD. And um, we're really lucky to have two of those people here with us today to share a bit about their experience and maybe tell them what the experience was like and what they learned and if they were doing it over again, uh, what sort of things they might uh, share with other people. So the first person we have here is uh, Christos. And Christos uh, participated the last two years and maybe uh, in a few minutes, he can say a little bit about his project. And then we also have Jake here. Uh, Jake worked to port IGT GPU tools to FreeBSD. And that was an interesting project in that um, uh, Jake got to work on the Linux KPI. So the Linux KPI is a, uh, a Linux kernel interface in FreeBSD. And, and the goal of that uh, KPI is to allow drivers uh, like video drivers or wireless drivers that were developed for Linux to work with little or no modification so they can just be dropped in and work on FreeBSD. Um, so maybe I will hand things over uh, to Christos so he can maybe tell us a little bit about his project and what he's been up to and just share a little information about his experience. So I'm going to uh, go back and stop sharing my screen. And Christos, are, are you there? Yeah, I am. Um, so the past project has been about, so, well, should I give a background speech face for, should I go ahead with the project? Oh, uh, whatever you, whatever you feel like sharing. So, so uh, the past project I did have for GSOC 2022 was uh, about extending DTrace to be able to, instead of trace um, a function, uh, as in trace the entry and the return point of a function, uh, we wanted to be able to trace every single instruction in, that, in a given function. So for example, if there is a certain if statement we wanna trace in a function, then we don't wanna, we wanna um, trace that exact instruction there. We find uh, what in the, uh, we find the exact instruction uh, through GDB, for example, and we give it to the new uh, DTrace provider. I should explain what provider is, perhaps. Uh, we give it to the new provider, and it can trace uh, that specific instruction. Um, so that was really the whole project. Um, it took a good four months, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, so that, that was a project, pretty much. And, and um, and after GSOC, I kept working on it, and I'm still working on it full time, actually, um, to be able to trace inline functions, because this is something that DTrace 
does didn't really have up until now. So I'm really happy to be working on that. Yeah, that's cool. It, uh, we were talking before uh, before the presentation that you got paired up with a really good mentor in Mark Johnson. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you can say like about the process, like the application process? What were the important steps? Anything that you learned? Now you did uh, two Google Summer of Code projects. You did one the year before. Is there anything that you learned from the first year that you used in the second year or any, any, any general tips for somebody applying? Well, yeah. So the first thing I really like to stress is that it's important to already have some experience with uh, the project, as in it's good to have some small contributions um, just to know what's going on with the project and not um, just in general to have um, friction with uh, other people, be active in the mailing lists, uh, submit patches if you can. So that's mm -hmm. definitely very, very good thing to have before applying for GSOC. Now, I really like to talk about why I chose FreeBSD because, I mean, as everyone, I was looking for operating systems in general and I decided to work on FreeBSD, first of all, because I was using it already. And because I found the code base to be very accessible to someone that, that is not really experienced, uh, an experienced OS developer as I was two years ago. So FreeBSD has a very clean and very tight uh, code base that pretty much if you're experienced with C, you can, I guess, you, you can navigate through it without, uh, yeah, you, you can easily navigate through it uh, compared to other operating systems that have very huge and complicated code base. So that was probably the, the biggest reason why I chose FreeBSD. Yeah, certainly it's uh, a little more compact than some other operating systems. Uh, in terms of lines of code, even, I mean, an objective measure, it's much smaller than, for example, Linux. So yeah, accessibility. Another kind of related point is that the community is, is not as large as some other communities. So I think there's more potential to make an impact maybe. Um, and yeah. the result, sorry. Let me interrupt you. And there is also, as I, as you said before the meeting, uh, DJ, or during the meeting, DJ, um, FreeBSD has a very strong mentoring culture. So I haven't had I haven't done like too many GSOCs, only two, but both of them I had great mentors. And even in the mailing list, people were very supportive. They want to uh, to help you. Be, they were interested in what you were working on. So there was. I can't remember of a single time that I had a question or something to talk about and didn't get a positive response or a useful response at least. That's so great. If, so yeah, I mean, I think previously it really has great mentors. As you said, Mark, for example, the mentor I had, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I don't think there is really a, enough things to say about how good he was. That's great. I think a key thing, perhaps, uh, to to match your success like that is to start early too. Make sure it's not so. On the so I, I mentioned that our community is a little smaller some, than some other communities. Uh, the good thing is that you might have like the potential to have a bigger impact, but you also have a smaller pool to choose for mentors. So it's important to start early to make sure you find someone. Uh, if possible, that's that that aligns with the type of work that you want to do. Um, yeah, definitely. Okay, well, that's great. Um, anything else before we switch off to Jake that you want to say? Not really. Okay, well, well thanks a lot, Christos. That's that's great. So, uh, Jake, if you want to share a little bit about your experience. Yeah, I guess I'm coming at this from a little bit of a different perspective. Um, I did not have prior OS development experience before uh, applying to Google Summer of Code. I, I had already been like done system administrator stuff over 
several years before I applied, but I never really dug into C or got my hands dirty with it. Um, one thing that I, I was told from the very beginning was just look at the source tree and, and try to understand it. And uh, Christos did mention that um, FreeBSD's code base is pretty clean, but it's still large. Um, it's still hard to figure out where to look for things. And I think the biggest friends for you will be like grep and find. Um, the more you use those tools, the more you can just search for function calls and uh, I guess look for stuff you're interested in. Um, if you have access to like um, a language server protocol editor, um, you can use utilities like bear to generate the compile commands. And then you can kind of just surf through the source tree in your editor. I found that to be extremely helpful. You just use like the go to definition commands. And then you can like, you can literally start from something very simple and then go down an entire rabbit hole, just figuring out, okay, um, now I'm in the syscall layer. Um, now I'm in the, the Kern subtree of FreeBSD. And uh, I think it's really cool to see how things intermingle in the source tree. Uh, everything's connected in some kind of way. And it all goes down to the very basic kernel subroutines, um, which again is extremely cool. Um, I think the most important part of or the most important and hardest part of your project is finding a good mentor at first and um, having that mentor share your interests. Because um, I was interested in graphics and not very many people in the, the FreeBSD community that were traditionally mentors re really wanted to mentor someone for graphics related content. Um, I got Joe here, um, who did the presentation before, uh, to mentor me along with another person named Menu, and he's part of the core team right now. Um, although my experience was pretty smooth, uh, I feel like if I weren't so determined, it would have been a lot more difficult. Uh, I really liked kernel development, and um, that's why I'm still here and still why I'm doing it, even on my own time. I just do kernel development for fun. Um, but if I were just doing it to dabble in it and then I ended up not liking kernel development, having a mentor that isn't really interested or aware of the subsystem that you're working with can make things extremely difficult. So my number one piece of advice for starting out and creating an application is find something that you're really interested in and then find someone else that is really interested that would be able to mentor you. And um, you can do this by searching for commits. Like you can um, get, I think it's git log grep and then, or git log author if you're trying to find a specific person. Um, you can search for people who have done things using author. You can search for specific keywords using git log grep. Um, find something that you're interested in and find those people, send them an email and uh, just get in contact with them. Uh, the relationships you make are extremely important. So um, I guess that's my number one piece of advice. Uh, I did porting IGT GPU tools to FreeBSD, which is a Linux specific graphics testing utility. And um, I dealt a lot with the Linux compatibility layer for FreeBSD, which is <laughs> honestly pretty messy and pretty uh, behind the current version of Linux. But um, I also kind of like the aspect that it's behind Linux in some ways, because you feel the motivation to catch up to Linux. You know that there's a lot of work ahead of you and a lot to be done. And I think that's a, a really fun thing because you can kind of treat it as like a competition of how fast I can really make FreeBSD catch up to Linux. Because really, if you're working for FreeBSD or using FreeBSD on the daily, you want your experience to be better. So I, I guess that brings me to my next big point is use FreeBSD. Like as you're doing this, load it up in a VM and actually like get acquainted with the operating system because I think it has some really awesome points that uh, 
distinguish itself from the other operating systems that exist. Uh, but my overall project went pretty good. Again, I was motivated to do the work. And uh, in the end, it all worked out and I'm planning on doing an internship or submitting a proposal for an internship for FreeBSD over the summer. So it shows if you're able to make your connections and do your work, then there are future opportunities for you in the FreeBSD community or even in the kernel industry. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I have. <laughs> yeah, that's great, Jake. Yeah, you you picked a particularly uh, challenging uh, project. I mean, graphics in, in the Linux KPI are, are, are pretty um, tough spots to work in. Um, uh, so the, the Linux KPI is interesting in that, um, I mean, there's some people that I think would prefer that we didn't have it, but it's just a, a matter of practicality. So a lot of these graphics drivers or, or wireless drivers, they're not developed, they're developed with Linux in mind. And we just have to um, be practical in that we just don't have the resources to, or it's, it's, we have limited resources and to redevelop these drivers or port them to FreeBSD uh, are challenging. And so if we have this Linux compatibility layer where you can just drop in uh, a video driver or a wireless driver that just frees up a developer uh, to work on something else, something you know, core uh, to the operating system. So yeah, yeah it, it's really a matter if you want graphics or Wi-Fi on your system. <laughs> like, yeah. like if you're fine without it, then yeah, we don't need Linux KPI. But personally, I use I'm using Wi-Fi right now, um, and I'm using my uh, Intel integrated graphics. So I wouldn't be here on this call if we didn't have a Linux KPI. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I think we have a question in, uh, in the IRC channel. Uh, SMK says, should proposal contain detailed timeline for project? Considering I chatted with Warner and obviously I can draw a certain timeline, but it's possible things might change on the road due to it due to quite a lot of unknown variables. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the timeline, um, it's, it's in a perfect world. I mean, software development doesn't always work, you know, exactly as planned. It should be like a best effort. I think the, the important things are that you um, try to meet that mid deadline and then you try to wrap things up and you, and you really work with your mentor to do your best to predict things. So, yeah, I think if you uh, diverge from the timeline a little bit, uh, that's fine. But I think it's also important to try to do your best and um, and try to meet the midterm and end goals. Um, let's see. I'm going to go to the other IRC channel, the Summer of Code channel. See if there's any questions there. Uh, nope. Anybody else have anything they want to add? I think Ed had to drop off for another call. Um, I don't think there's too much more for me. Uh, one thing I'll say, I just, I think I've said it a little bit before, but I want to stress, and Jake, I think it was very important in your case, it's to start as early as possible. Don't put this off to the end because finding a mentor, uh, tweaking a, a project application, uh, it takes time. And I know Jake, we had, it's a good thing you started early because I know we had a few hiccups in the end. Um, so um, even starting earlier, it can be a challenge. So can't stress that enough. Stay on top of that timeline. And, and I definitely uh, agree with the, a point that you made, Jake, about um, you know running FreeBSD is another way to find project ideas because uh, when you're running FreeBSD on your own system and you find this little, this thing that you want to improve, it sort of gives you the motivation to, to work on it. It's like, oh, I, I'm running this, it's, or I'm using it for this job and it doesn't do exactly what I want. And it plants that little, that little seed that you want to like make it better and improve it. Uh, that, that's a key thing, I think. And it looks like we have another question here from M SMK. I have worked on server administration and mind test before, but not really into mind test community. 
not part of GSOC either, as they don't qualify as foundation org, would that be cons considered as beginner or open source contributor? Um, I'm not sure. Does any, do you guys know what mine test is? I'm not, server administration, hmm. I mean, I if there was. Mine test is a game, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I can say something about server administration. I mean, I think Google Summer of Code is about programming. So if you could find some sort of tool that you could code for your system administration, it might make a, a reasonable project. Um, yeah, and I just, I don't know much about mind tests, so I can't say anything uh, about that. I feel like kernel development is such a different experience compared to just regular user space development. Um, especially the community that surrounds it. Um, you'll figure out that the kernel people have their, their ups and downs, but generally I, I find a, to like them a lot and they're very straightforward people. Um, they, they don't really wanna waste their time. But with that, you find a lot of people who are extremely experienced, um, who know a lot of stuff. And when you, go into the, the kernel community, you'll realize how big the, the kernel really is and how much there is to learn. So even if you've done work for mind test, which seems like a pretty big project, but it's in the user space, there's still so much to explore in the kernel. Mm. So yeah, certainly there's always uh, more work to be done than there are people who do it. There's no shortage of work. It's just aligning your interests with what needs to be done and your skills and that sort of thing. Um, so Jake, um, it's, it's not so straightforward to, to dive into kernel work. Do you have any, like, how did you set up your development environment? How did you learn about that? How did you get started with kernel development? Well, I've used FreeBSD for a very long time. Um, I've just been doing general system administrator stuff. So I was very used to a Unix-like environment. Um, that wasn't difficult for me. I really just cloned the source tree and I started looking through um, the Linux KPI subtree and um, just analyzing different files. It's kind of difficult at the start because you don't really know where to put things. And even now um, I'm fairly experienced. I mean, I'm still a beginner compared to some of the other people in the community, but I, I feel like I have a good idea of where things go but sometimes you even struggle to, to find things. And um, I feel like you shouldn't feel bad or you shouldn't feel stupid if you can't find something. Um, it's, it's tough and the source tree is pretty big. And um, really I, I'd recommend just sifting through or grepping for keywords or functions that you're interested in and then analyzing how they work. So. I did graphics um, and I searched for some graphics functions. For example, um, like I try to find, well, this isn't really applicable to the FreeBSD source tree because the graphics stuff is kept outside of the source tree because it's GPL license. Um, it, I'm talking more DRM KMOD, which is a separate package, but it's all kernel source code anyway. So it's all the same. Um, it would be the same process for the, the uh, FreeBSD source tree. But um, I, I went to go see like, okay, where does this start, right? Where does the, the code start from? It's the beginning of its execution and what functions does it execute? So for example, I was looking like, um, how does it derive the pixels from the display or how does it fetch it? How does it do mode setting? Like how does it determine uh, what resolution your screen is and how to display your graphics pixels on your display. Um, it's really just taking knowledge that you already have developed from your interests and then looking for them in the source tree. Again, it's not easy, but um, grep is your best friend. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So can I add a point here? Absolutely. So I really agree with uh, Jake's point about finding where something starts. So I had this exact same question about 
where does the kernel start, right? I mean, I, I, I knew where the boot code uh, the boot code was, but I couldn't find where the first uh, kernel function was, like this kernel main, for example, something like that. And I just couldn't find it. But so once you find that, you can start seeing, okay, this function calls this one. And so you end up, you end up getting a better um, understanding of how uh, each function and each subsystem in a FreeBSD kernel is uh, interconnected. But I think um, an even better way to get started with kernel development is uh, going to the bugs page, uh, finding a bug, a bug you, you think you could fix and starting to fix it basically. Um, finding a bug that you can actually test, like don't choose a bug for a driver or a hardware piece that you just do not have. So I think having a goal in mind is way more efficient than just reading the code, which also is very uh, important. Hmm. Yeah, all good points. Uh, maybe uh, another one that popped into my mind for somebody that's looking to start getting involved uh, with OS development and in particular FreeBSD development, uh, Jake, I think you um, you had a, a nice book that uh, helped you out. Do you want to say something about the book? Oh, you got it right there. Excellent. Yeah. So some pretty uh, some pretty prolific FreeBSD developers uh, wrote a book, and I think it's on the second edition right now. Uh, Jake, yeah. Maybe you could say a little bit about it since you have it in your hand. Yeah. If you want to learn a lot about operating systems um, and some things about FreeBSD specific components of operating systems. Um, get this book, <laughs> The Design and Implementation of FreeBSD. It's by um, McCusick, uh, Watson, and Neville Neal. Um, they're all very experienced developers. Uh, I think, I know McCusick has been there since the start of like for BSD, but um, even Watson and Neville Neal are very experienced and they know what they're talking about. Uh, if you've taken an operating systems course before, like in university, a lot of it will be redundant information, but I read this book before I took the operating systems course. And I feel like I'm taking that operating systems course now and I already know everything. It's a breeze. I, I could just not attend a lecture. I still do, but this book covers everything and goes so in detail and uh, does it with such clear explanations. If you're willing to put in the time to actually learn and analyze the, the book and its uh, structures that it presents you, then you'll be solid. It'll give you a great entry point into kernel, kernel development. But I feel like what's important to note is that even if you've read that entire book and you know it like the back of your hand, that doesn't mean that you're gonna be able to just go into the kernel development space and then start writing lines of code, like hundreds of lines. Uh, there's a learning curve to figuring out how the source tree works, how the, the commit process works, um, how Fabricator, the review system works and um, getting feedback from others, right? Writing code is completely different than studying a book. But if you're interested in OS or you want to get a good head start and know what you're talking about or know your development specifics so you can write code easier, I highly recommend the design and implementation of FreeBSD. It's a great book. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, it helps you out with your operating system course at university. In fact, I think um, Robert Watson, one of the authors, uh, is a professor and I believe that he's used that book as part of an operating systems course at uh, Cambridge, I believe. Yeah, he, I think he does use it as his um, textbook. Mm -hmm. um, SMK has wrote a little bit more in the IRC channel. Um, he did confirm that you're right, uh, that it's a game that's, Mind Test is a game that's similar to Minecraft. Uh, he also mentions that he is interested to get into kernel development. Uh, so maybe some of the tips that you've given can can help SMK out to, to, to get into uh, that. Um, and I think that's all from the IRC channel, yeah. Okay, well, um, maybe last call, if anybody else has anything they want to say, and if not, maybe we can. I, uh, 
Oh, I just have one quick thing. Hi, uh, I'm Anne. I'm the marketing director here. Um, I just think the other thing is don't be afraid to ask questions. I think of of the program of the admins, and you know, if you're not sure exactly about who to talk to, or you think you might know who to talk to, I think making sure that you ask, um, you know, the FreeBSD admins and and folks, they'll be able to help you. Um, they they know the community. They they can find out who to ask if they don't know. Um, so, you know, if you see something you think you want to do, but you can't exactly figure out, you know, who to talk to, that's why there, that information's on that GSOC page so that you can ask. Right. But so don't be afraid to use that. A, a little bit of repetition. There's two places. If you have like kind of FreeBSD type questions, I think the hackers at FreeBSD.org mailing list is probably your best bet. Um, if you have kind of administrative questions about GSOC, it's that SOC-admins at FreeBSD.org address is, is your best bet. Okay. Well, thanks again, Jake and uh, Christos for, uh, for joining us. Uh, your input was uh, really helpful. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right then. So I guess, Anne, uh, maybe we can uh, end things here.